My name is Richard Abney and I'm proud to work for Wentworth Pewter. Uh, we've been in, here in Sheffield since 1946. Founded by Arthur Wentworth, Arthur used to work previously for the famous Viners Company, running their pewter division, and then eventually after World War II he set up on his own to create his own company. The pewter industry has been in Sheffield since the 1760s and has built on a long tradition of metal craft in Sheffield which obviously we're extremely proud to be continuing the heritage and the tradition of. The techniques we use are largely unchanged since that time. Everything is handcrafted. They're extremely skilled craftsmen and women who produce the finest quality product from a very long tradition and very long heritage and it all makes us all very proud to be here. Amongst the pieces we make are the very traditional um, tankers and flasks and goblets. But we also try and innovate as far as possible and introduce design into pewter wherever possible. Uh, this is the manufacture of a Georgian tankard, a uh, 17th century design, a very traditional design for a pewter tankard. The first process is the spinning process and it starts with a circle of pewter. Pewter is an alloy predominantly of tin with a small amount of copper and antimony added in order to make it more malleable, but at the same time change the colour a little and make it strong enough to be worked. The first stage is called drafting, where the piece is drawn out from the circle over the forming block by a spinner. He uses various hand tools to push and move the metal into the right shape and forms it into the bucket type shape, which is known as the draft. A section chuck is required in order to make the final tulip shape. Essentially the metal is redistributed around the former, so it will change in thickness and it will change in shape and length across the body of the tankard. The tankard has a lip put on which has a dual purpose of adding strength to the product by thickening up the sheet, essentially doubling it in thickness, but also acts as a comfortable lip when drinking. The chuck separates into several sections and is removed. The foot is formed from a separate circle of pewter. Again this is drafted over the forming block. The centre of the foot is cut out by the spinner to form a ring style foot. This is to enable it to sit more comfortably on the body of the tankard once it's metal smoothed together later. The handle of the tankard is cast separately by a different craftsman in a slush casting process. This is done with a metal mould which will be centuries of years old, passed down through the industry over many generations. The designs very rarely change. The molten metal is poured into one end of the mould and poured out of the other end with the handle itself solidifying around the cold edge of the gun metal or occasionally brass mould. Each handle has a gate on it at each end which will require trimming on a bandsaw. Where the mould separates, there'll be a line on each handle, which is known as the mould line. To remove this line, a process known as linishing occurs. Because the handle could be used on any number of different tankard designs, each handle has to be shaped to each individual tankard. The next stage is to clean the surface of each piece to make it a proper workable surface for the assembly process and also to provide a nice smooth surface for the polishing. This is done by a process known as buffing. Buffing involves applying a mixture of pumice mixed in with rapeseed oil just to give it the right consistency and the right weight. This is then applied to the product and applied to a tough stitch mop which is a very abrasive surface which cleans the surface of the pewter. The effects of buffing can be seen in the colour change in the product. Essentially, layers of pewter have been taken away to form a uniform surface throughout the product. All the lines, all the scratches, all the solder marks that might be present are all taken off at this stage. This applies a universal finish for the polishing process later, but also allows the metalsmiths a better surface to work on when they start to assemble the product. Each base is put on a turntable. This centres the base on the body of the tankard and ensures that it's right in the middle. At this point as well it becomes clear why the centre of the foot was cut out in order to make it sit more comfortably on the bellied bottom of the tankard. 
Heat is applied to the body of the tankard itself rather than to the solder. It is also essentially pewter with a slightly different alloy mix. That The solder will melt at a slightly lower temperature than the pewter sheet itself and form a nice, neat and complete seam assembling the tankard foot to the body. Similarly, the handle will be soldered onto the body of the tankard. Each handle is applied by tagging it first and completing the seal with a more complete solder. Each piece is washed to ensure it's clean for the polisher to get a proper shine on each product. Then put on a drying table just to speed the process up slightly. The final polish is applied by a polisher who, also in Sheffield, is traditionally known as a dollier. Different finishes can be applied to pewter, and on this piece two are being applied. The inside of the tanker is having a sateen finish, which is a matte finish applied by a scratched abrasive mop, whilst the outside of the tanker is being highly polished, with a rouge compound being applied to a soft cotton mop. It's an extremely flexible mop that allows us to get into all the nooks and crannies of the tanker and to produce a very high sheen and a very high silver light finish. We're a family company. I work with my mum, my sister, my uncle. Sheffield's crucial to what we do and it's crucial to everything that we stand for. We have a number of high street retailer customers in the UK where they're only UK supplier. They could get the products in the Far East but they choose to buy it here because of the tradition and the branding that's allowed with the name Made in Sheffield.